I know we're all of a sudden zoomed in, but why is this so cute? Like, whoa, I'm a mastermind. I'm Starboy and welcome to my world. And today we are talking about the senses and sensory overload. So I had this idea on Instagram, basically my friend Mikey, legend, sent me a TikTok by like, Jay Wolf like, too, where basically she's stimming and like listening to music with headphones and she's trying to combat that. And at the end of it, she was like crying with joy because she like done it and it felt so empowering. So I had an idea of why don't I do something similar where I talk to you guys about the sensory things that really can get me to feel like a sensory overload and it's Explain everything about it and we just have a discussion so I talk about the negative and then I treat myself because you know who doesn't love a good old shopping session maybe some shopping maybe some not you know I'm almost like reward myself for dealing with all these struggles in the past and dealing with them for today because I kind of realized I don't really reward myself sometimes for what I do and I was like I should I should give myself some credit because I worked hard and I deserve it so you guys will come along just enjoy the ride literally a ride life is a highway before we start please make sure you subscribe give it a thumbs up, hit the notification bell, you know the drill, and without further ado, let's begin. So you're probably also wondering, Steph, what is actually sensory overload? And sensory overload is basically where you kind of feel like more than one senses have been like stressed a lot and have been overstimulated to the point where it can become overwhelming. This one is definitely common within autistic kids because again, with our senses, we they are particularly heightened. Someone described it almost like we're a kid. We become very sensitive to certain things. So for example, like noises, we become very sensitive to. It can be more than one thing is combined. So for example, for me, it's usually busy crowds, plus lots of talking, plus not being able to fidget or touch stuff equals me leading to a sensory overload. And it can be quite a lot, and it often can lead to meltdowns, whether you are younger or older, it does happen. Let's start off with the first sense properly. We are in my parents. You can tell I can do this. Also, why is my outfit so cute? I don't know, I'm just a stylist like that. <laughs> we have got my laptop right here. So you guys can view with me. The first sense I want to do is actually my sound, the one that affects me the most. So I want to discuss particularly one thing that still triggers me to go into sensory overload, and that is the sound of crisps or chips. I know for a lot of people this is like, oh my god, I adore them, but it's always like been such a discomfort ever since I was a child. Like it's always been so difficult to deal with because also like it's so annoying to tell like, every single person like, hey, I don't like the sound of crisps. Can you stop? Some people do, some people don't. Again, even when we were younger when my sisters wanted to eat crisps and I really didn't do that. Like, I literally couldn't stand it. I couldn't be in the room. Even in the dinner hall, I was kicking and screaming in year two because I was a pat lunch and I didn't want to eat with the other pat lunches. Honestly, it was just a lot and I'm still kind of dealing with it to this day but I do think I've got a lot better and it still kind of like triggers me. Also, I will say when there's a lot of excessive noise together, which is why I find this at work a lot. I will say with this one though, more particularly, it kind of builds up and I will explain more because it's more of the other factors that I will explain later to do with like sight and touch plus the excessive extra noise, sensory overload, can't deal with it, I have to get out and have to breathe. It's quite difficult to deal with and again like it's something that I wish sometimes it was easier. I obviously I've developed and grown so much that now I can kind of like deal with it. However, I do think because of lockdown it has definitely affected me more to be honest. I'm dealing with it, I'm taking one step at a time. And I also wanted to say that not every sensory stimulus that's like negative will affect every single autistic person the same. Let's talk about the positives. Music, actually. I love music. Literally, my Spotify is where it's at. If you're not following me on Spotify, what the frick are you doing? It's Stylish Steph. I have playlists for everything. We've got like some K-pop, got like our driving playlist, High School Romance. We've got a gay summer thought playlist. <laughs> We've literally got everything, so please go and check it out. For me, music is definitely something that definitely has always helped, which is probably why I'm really good at concerts, which sounds weird, especially because I'm talking about loud noises and other stuff I will discuss later. But for me, I think it's because A, it's something I adore. Like, I'm not gonna go to a concert for someone I don't enjoy. Nah. So for me, it's so much fun. It's so enjoyable. The music is incredible. Like, I've been to see Little Mix, Taylor Swift, and Miss Ariana Grande. Honestly, music has helped me through so much. And even when I do feel like I get overwhelmed, what I'll do now, which I've recently learned, is that I just plug in my headphones and literally just listen to music. Honestly, it gets you lost. It makes you feel comfortable. I did it on the train for the first time I went on public transport. Why 
yeah, by the way, I won public transport for the first time in five months. Honestly, it always helps. So, for this reward, I am thinking two things. One, if you also know me, I have a CD collection, I have a vinyl collection, and I want to continue growing it. So, I'm going to HMV. One of them is to buy a vinyl. So, one of them is specific is Dua Lipa's Future Nostalgia. I love it so much. Oh, why are you still stuck? Or, m and &E and because he's a living legend, I am actually was thinking about buying his vinyl. Honestly, like, again, if you have not listened to language, what are you doing with your life? Also, with vinyls, I have a great idea for my room that I really wanted to add it in. I think we're gonna move on to the next sentence. Let us go. Number two! Number two I'm gonna do is actually smell. Now, smell, these two I will say are probably the strongest for me out of all of them. I feel like the other three, in my opinion, a lot more like if they're combined and I like, bitch, I'm done. But I feel like particularly with sound and then smell, these two, they get me overwhelmed the quickest, they get me to leave the sensory overload the quickest, and I generally can't take them. And the other one is the smell of McDonald's. This one again, people are gonna be like, what the fuck? Steph, I love McDonald's, huh? I cannot stand the smell. Oh my god, I hate the smell of McDonald's with a burning passion. <clears throat> oh my god, it makes me feel so uncomfortable, like, and it's so intense. That's how quickly sensory overload can come like that, because everything gets so heightened and so intense that it's just like, your brain can't process it, your brain can't take it, and I feel like you have to run out of the situation as soon as you can. So for me, in particular, when it comes to smell of McDonald's, I just couldn't. Like, I mean, the obvious way to deal with it, which was my way, which was literally to hold my nose and speak like a squidward from Spongebob. But literally, that was the way to deal with it, because so many people, particularly when I was younger, used to just eat it. My preference is I will not be in the room if you are eating it. Now I feel like this was the one I'm probably overcome the most in comparison. Not that, like, I'm eating or anything. <laughs> the smell and everything to do with it just really makes me feel uncomfortable. And again, the annoying thing is, you can't, you mean you can, but it feels like you're policing and sometimes people ignore it. There was one time and my friend and I went out and she wanted McDonald's. She knew I couldn't deal with it and then I still have to deal with it and sit there. And that's the thing is at work I still have to go in and people eat McDonald's for lunch and I have to like cope with it. And for me that's so difficult to do. However, for good smells, cinnamon and berry flavored candles, masterpiece. I was gonna look for a candle, but I don't know where like good candle places are. So if any of you guys know a good candle place, comment down below. Cinnamon. <gasps> Rolls. Okay, so we've got, ooh, Scandinavian rituals. Ooh, get a bit bougie. Okay, this one, I will do a proper investigation after. I feel like I'm not gonna buy anything. <laughs> Cause also, other fun fact about me, I am the most indecisive person when it comes to shopping. If I need to buy something, I ponder so much about it. I'm like, do I buy it? Do I not buy it? What do I do? Ah, I'm an overthinker. Oh my God, this one looks pretty. It is 20 pounds, but it's lime and lime and cinnamon. I mean, look at that. Look how pretty that is. Oh, perfect. Also, lemon scent. I love a good old lemon scent. Cold beauty. I love Sonic Sweet. This is from Fresh. This one looks quite nice. Again, she real pricey for a roll on perfume, 21 pounds. This one is from Raga Perfume. It is vegan and cruelty free. And the range is from £2.97 to £58. Oh my god, you can buy a trial. Oh, she tiny. She real fucking tiny. We'll go on to touch next. So now we're in this like awkward corner of my living room. I thought it looked cute because my family's vinyl player is here. We have some vinyls, including one I brought for my dad actually for his birthday of Lionel Richie. For touch, touch is like a weird one because I feel like for touch there's honestly two that I want to get into. So for touch, actually one of them is not fidgeting with something, if that makes sense. So a lot of the time when I do feel quite overwhelmed, either because of noises or senses, that something just gets triggered. So usually get noises. What I'll end up doing is fidgeting a lot. So that's called stimming. When you just like fidget or you do like a motion, it's usually repeated. So you end up feeling more comfortable. So for some people it's rocking back and forth. For me, it's usually like doing this, like with a product. So for example, let's take this. So at work, imagine this was a product I would just be doing this the entire time. Even like walking around, I would just do this. And honestly, that's what helps me calm down. So usually if I do get very, very, very overwhelmed, but I still know I have to do work, what I'll do is I'll start paying stuff back. And when someone limits me in doing that, what I've realized I feel even more overwhelmed. Actually, I feel very overwhelmed quickly because I don't know what to do. So even sometimes I'll start playing with my pockets, I'll start clicking just to get me moving because at the end of the day, that's what helps me the most. So when I avoid doing that, 
that. It can get me to sensory over like that because I'm like, I can't move my hand. I can't get out of this. What the heck do I do? Because I panic a lot. Actually, when I get into sensory overload and face like almost like a near meltdown, I actually panic. I get very anxious. My brain feels like it's wiring at 356 miles per hour and I can't literally do anything. So I'm like, oh my God, what the frick do I do? What the frick do I do? What the frick do I do? And then I have to run to get out of somewhere and just stop thinking about it. So that's like one side of touch. And the other side of touch with people. So with people, when I'm definitely feeling negative, please do not touch me unless you're giving me a hug and I know you. Because especially if you don't know me or in return, if you were someone who I don't really get along with and you just start touching my shoulder or touching my arm or whatever, please don't, like, please. I beg you, do not. It makes me so uncomfortable. Of course, if you're like a good person and we are paying it off and like a face sensory overload, like, and you've just met me, touch me. But if you're like someone who I don't get along with, someone I feel uncomfortable around, and then you just start touching my shoulder, <laughs> makes me feel more panicked. So honestly, that's something else. But something that does make me feel very good touching is like I was fairly fidgeting with something. And something that does also make me feel good is cuddles and pressure on me. This makes me feel so good. Ever since I was a child, I always loved with people like, sounds really weird. You know when you're a kid and you just like mess around, so you start to put your hand underneath someone's seat. And you're like, oh, let's play. I just do that. When someone used to tell it, I just, just leave it and be like, just in peace. So it means that I love pressure on me. And even like when someone's giving me hug, if you give me more of a tighter hug versus like a looser hug, I love it. You are putting pressure on my body. You are making me feel so good. So honestly, I love it. So this is why I have been actually thinking about getting a weighted blanket. I have been wanting one for actually quite a while. And I know that weighted blankets are traditionally for like anxiety and autism because a lot of autistic kids also like the idea of pressure on them. This is from Therapy Blanket. That's 109 pounds. A gravity blanket. Summer colors. Delighted pup. Ew. As again, it's also for anxiety because apparently it really helps. Why are people not crediting it for autism? <laughs> Mosaic weighted blanket. Fools, kings, and queens. Minky. What the frick is Minky? Some kind of like some sexual thing. Well, best weighted blanket. I have to also say, this became such a big thing. It almost came like normalized. But where is it talking about autism? John Lewis. 110. Lovely. Did I look at Remy? Oh, <gasps> that shade of pink. Oh, I think it's a duvet cover. Yes. Does Simba do any other colors? 149, but you're also in gray. Why are they all in gray? Why am I most attracted to the pink one? Of course I am. You know what, Miss Weighty Blanket, we'll have to think about you. Let's go into the next location before I am tempted to spend 120 pounds on a weighty blanket. My mom has these flowers out and I thought they were way prettier, so we're having them next to me. Aren't they so beautiful? Next one is taste. So this is not really to do with like the flavors of food, but I would say for taste, texture is like, oh, again, like I'm not really a food person that makes you go like, oh, when it comes to things or make me need to sensory overload, but the one that is anything that's like creamy and thick and gooey. No, no, it actually makes me gag. Oh, I hate it so much. Mashed potato, don't even get me to try because I will literally gag it out. And even like sometimes, I guess, because you can hear the noises when you eat. Something that really, really like gets me to sense through overload also is like anything that's too crunchy and thin. Anything that's over creamy. That's why I really don't like the idea of like caramel. However, something that Steph does enjoy a lot when it comes to food and textures in his mouth are cookies. And specifically because y'all need to have these a bend cookies. They are like doughy. Oh. Look, look at the chocolate. I haven't had a Ben's cookie in months. Even like when I went to Central, I didn't have one. And honestly, I love them so much. I'm a huge cookie fan, if you don't know. There's so, there's a rose cookie. <gasps> Ruby white chocolate. The reason why I like this is because it's almost like cookie dough and I love doughy food. Like I love bao buns. Oh, bao buns are so good. They're like something I absolutely adore and they taste absolutely amazing. So bao buns, Ben's cookies. I love like bread when it's more on the doughy side versus like crispy. I don't know why I really like doughy foods, but I do. But I love Ben's cookies. If you're wondering what one I specifically get, I either get the cranberry and white chocolate, but my particular favorite is the orange and chocolate. It's a masterpiece. Ben's cookies really know what the frick they're doing. Oh my god, now I really want a Ben's cookie. I was gonna bake. I was gonna actually gonna go and prepare and bake something for this video. Maybe another time. 
One of the final scents, and that is Sight. Now, Sight is actually probably the one that affects me, I would say the least. And this one in particular, this one is definitely a combined thing. But I would say the one that most affects me via Sight is a lot of people. Crowded areas, but that are smaller. So, for example, not really like out in public. So, for example, outside, that wouldn't really overwhelm me. Working inside a shop during Boxing Day, nah, cannot do, no. And I think it's also a because I saw a lot of people that was pressure on top of me to work, then there was noise, then there was thingy, so that was like a lot at once, and usually it just gets quite a bit. And obviously the same thing is like, oh, what about a concert? Because I have a lot of people there. I'm like, usually for a concert, I'm sitting and I know where to leave. And for me, I just find that if it's just crowded in one area, like I don't like that. So even if there's like a small gathering and there's so much noise and I see a lot of stuff, it just becomes almost like a blur. Like it starts to blur together like the noise and the thingy in my head, and I just need space to separate myself from the environment, have some space, and just to listen to some music. And the positive side is that special, and that is fashion. I love fashion, and I miss making fashion videos, and I'm definitely gonna make some soon. And honestly, like, I love shopping, and I love trying new clothes on. I know that for a lot of autistic people, it can be a struggle. I mean, obviously it makes sense, because different fabrics on the body lead to sensory overload. For me, it isn't. So, I'm gonna show you some of my favorites that I have parted from ASOS. These trousers, and these, I love the pajama trend, and I still do and I really want a pajama shirt but these trousers are so cute. We also have these ones because I am some dungarees. I love dungarees. Oh my god I do. To be honest why don't we just have a quick little look. You know it's like an online come shop with me. I mean this literally whole entire video is an online come shop with me but da -da. I'm gonna look for some dungarees. Ooh, I like the pink. You were from Love Island. Oh my god the pink. Oh my god a rainbow straps. You know gay rights. <laughs> Look how aesthetically pleasing the way that this is laid down is. I'm in on the hunt for a bag, and in my opinion, women's section do bags way better than the men's. Just saying. But I'm gonna be looking at a bag, and I kind of want one of those like shoulder bag because I currently have backpacks and I have a tote. Oh, I also have a little fanny pack. I have a crossover body bag which was from Kipling. I want to get like a cute shoulder bag. Oh, this raffle number. Oh my, she is doing the most when no one else. Oh my god, a bucket bag. I want more preferably like a navy. Blue or brown. The lilac. I could look like a 2000 bitch. Yes! Oh, there's like so many bag brands that I've got advertised on Instagram all of a sudden, and they are serving some cute ass bags. So, little lavish. Even the Maya. Oh, the Ava. Look how cute it is. Like, it's actually kind of a moment. Or there's another brand, JW Peel. Affordable luxury designer vegan brand. I mean, there's the classic, you know, I'm a real 2000s bitch. There's so many. I'm trying to find like the one. Oh my god, they do it in lemon. I love the circle. Oh, let's look at crossbody because they're the other kind of bag that I would look. For. Oh, this one's pretty. It's got some like ivory leather skin. Sage green! Oh my god, that kind of matches like the nails like at the moment. Oh my god, that's pretty. I actually do need a bag for you either, like a casual bag. Editing stuff is in the house. In a tie-dye sweatshirt and a pair of shorts. Hey! So I wanted to update you guys to tell you if I actually brought anything or if I didn't and the answer to that is I did not buy a thing from looking at everything. <laughs> oh I know. But I think I'm actually the most intrigued to buy either the JW Peel bags and the weighted blanket. I know it's expensive, believe me that price tag, but I do want one and I think not only would it make cute room decor, I think it would really help me and I definitely can see it helping me in the long run. If you actually want to come shop with me, comment down below. But I really hope you did enjoy this video and actually hope you did learn a bit about all because you know, learn something new every day. Please like, subscribe, share. You know what to do, and I shall see you guys very, very soon. Jeez, adios. Goodbye, people. Goodbye.